Well, welcome in the precious and glorious name of Jesus to the Ignited Mentoring Series. My name is Robert Pears. I'm so glad you're joining as we press in today to understand how to receive your healing. And I'm going to share insight from Smith Wigglesworth. You know, I'm working on a new series of documentaries and there'll be a trilogy on Smith. As I was preparing and doing my research, I had to look at the many miracles and healings that occurred in his ministry and check and look and study for testimonies where people were actually healed and to hear what they had to say. And it really blessed me as I read. And I'm reminded really of my earlier days where I remember being back in Northern Ireland, meeting in houses and seeing people healed, people getting out of wheelchairs. I recall being healed many times myself, sometimes instantly, sometimes it would come over time. But it never ever crossed my mind that God was not the Lord our healer. I have a video to share with you, which is up actually, where I show how in the first number of centuries uh, in the early church, they were known and defined by the fact that divine healing was commonplace for believers. They prayed over the sick and the sick were healed. It's the children's bread. But today it has become so commonplace that we have lost sight and we're not seeing the healings that God so desperately wants us to appreciate. Well, I pray this message really blesses you. So let's pray, let's press in. In the glorious name of Jesus, Father, we come. And I thank you for eyes to see, ears to hear, and a hearing heart. Holy Spirit, so come. I'm so grateful for your mighty ministry. Would you come and glorify Jesus? Would you come and reveal what Jesus did on the cross and our inheritance and teach us on the divine healing? Because Jesus came to destroy the works of the enemy. And Father, sickness and disease is not your perfect will for us. And so I'm so grateful that you made provision through the precious sacrifice and the finished work of the cross so that Jesus, Father, receive all the honor, all the glory in this message. And I thank you in that name that is above all names, the name of Jesus, we pray. And everyone said amen. Most of us in the spiritual world know about divine healing. We can share all the verses and we can say it and we've become so programmed, but it sadly become commonplace. I want to start by sharing with you two stories from Matthew chapter 8 of two different individuals that were healed. And it's in Matthew 8 verses 1 through 3, verse 5 through 10 and verse 13. 1 through 3, 5 through 10, and verse 13. And it says, When he had come down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him. And behold, a, a leper came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Then Jesus put out his hand, touched him, saying, I am willing, be cleansed. Immediately his leprosy was cleansed. Now the second one. Now when Jesus had entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him, plead with him, saying, Lord, my servant is lying at home paralyzed, dreadfully tormented. And Jesus said to him, I will come and heal him. Then the centurion said, Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof, but only speak a word and my servant will be healed. For I am a man under authority and having soldiers under me, I say to this one, go, and he goes, and to another one, come, and he comes. And to my servant, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to those who followed, Assuredly, I say to you, I have not found such great faith, not even in Israel. Then Jesus said to the centurion, Go your way, and as you believed, so let it be done for you. And his servant was healed that same hour. Two different healings done two different ways, and there's so much we can learn from it. I want to start by sharing from Smith Wigglesworth, and he said this, Here we have a wonderful word. All the word is wonderful. This blessed book brings such life and health and peace and such an abundance that we should never be poor 
anymore. This book is my heavenly bank, and I find everything I want in it. I want to show you how rich you may be, that in everything you can be enriched in Christ Jesus. And we need to understand two very important things. One, is the word living vibrant and now? Or has it, has it become commonplace? We know we know all the verses, we know all the things on divine healing, and that you know when someone comes and they're trying to stir your faith and they share scriptures, I know all that. And we are rich and in need of nothing. But the word has lost its life. It's lost its vibrancy. It's lost its authority in our lives because it's not the loudest voice because the problem is always in the day of trial. That's where we really stand. Uh, so where we really stand is proven. Smith would say later that for every uh, truth that you stand for, you are tested for and you will be tested so you can claim it and say you believe it. But the proof is on the day of trial. And the second thing, we can walk in an agreement with something or we can walk in submission to something. Judas was the only disciple who called the Lord Master. The rest called him Lord. As a calling him Master, we said, I am in an agreement with you. And he was all the way until John chapter 12, when the woman came with that vessel of oil, went to break it over his feet, and he was offended because he had a lust and desire for that money. And all of a sudden, that offense broke the agreement. And see, we can walk in an agreement with the Lord regarding healing, but not in submission. And it's how we see and walk in alignment with the Word. Stay with me. I'm going to bring, come back to this so you understand what I'm talking about. Smith said this, I want to show you that you can be a, a living branch of the living vine. Christ Jesus, and that is your privilege to be right here in this world. And what he and John tells us, as he is, so are we in this world. 1 John 4, 17. Not that we are anything in ourselves, but Christ within us is our all and all. We can be connected to a variety of vines, variety of networks and beliefs and systems, but it's are we connected to the real vine? And the real proof is in the day of trial, what do we do? Let me explain something to you. So you can say, I believe in divine healing, and you've learned all the methods of faith and divine healing. But when the sickness comes, do you instantly run to the Lord? Seek His face as the great physician and say, Lord, what would you have me to do? And what he says carries an authority. Or does your opinions, the opinions of your local church, of your network, carry the greatest authority? So that if the Lord Turan said, go and do this, and we see in the scriptures, often he gave a command, go do this. Let's say he said, go to the doctor. Would we refuse because it would be seen as a lack of faith by the people we walk with. Or do we automatically refuse to go to the doctor so that people see us? Well, we're walking in faith and we never once asked the Lord. And when things don't work out the way we want, we get offended at the Lord and we are no longer in an agreement with Him. But we never submit it to Him. See, if you submit, you come to and you ask, what would you have me to do? And you go to the Word and you build yourself upon the Word, not on somebody else's revelation. That is not to say that that person's revelation is wrong, but you've got to get it for yourself in the secret place of His presence and submit to that personally. It's got to be a now living Word to you right here and you've got to hear the lord's directions to you because sometimes there is a commitment and command to do something and that he's asking you to uh, trust him in faith move forward 
because there's always a point of contact where our faith, and remember that faith works with works. There is a, a compliance of faith that's demonstrated in the work, in the obedience to do what we're called to do, not simply following a method to be seen as in an agreement with something, but we're talking about a wholehearted submission to. And I'm telling there's times where the Lord will call you to do something and it comes at great cost as it did for the leper and the woman with the issue of blood. They did not get their victory easily. Smith would explain that. Now, before I go there, listen to this. The Lord Jesus is always wanting to show forth His grace and love in order to draw us to Himself. God is willing to do things to manifest His Word and let us know and measure the mind of our God in this day and hour. There are many needy ones, many afflicted ones, but I do not think any present are half as bad as this first case that we read of in Matthew 8. This man was a leper. You may, not be, you may be suffering with consumption or cancers or other things, but God will show you forth His perfect cleansing, His perfect healing. If you have a living faith in Christ, He is a wonderful Jesus. Now, let me explain something. This man was a leper. The woman with the issue of blood, she could hide her bleeding. And only those who knew her knew that she was disqualified from being in the crowd. The leper can't hide it. Everything about him reveals the truth. And therefore, to step into the crowd that day came at great cost. He had to know that he knew, which is proof in what he said. Jesus was the healer. And the first thing I was ask you, who is your healer? Who is Jesus to you? Because it all comes down to the revelation that we personally have, that we're willing to demonstrate, even in paying a price for, who Jesus is to us. See, many people will say, Jesus is my Savior until they experience persecution. What if standing up for your healing comes at a cost? Would you do it? Are you sold out that He is your healer? Not doing what you think, but finding out what He says and being obedient to him, even if it makes you a fool, even if it makes you like this leopard stepping out in the crowd and coming. And we see in this man is willing to submit and that he says to the Lord, I know you can heal. I'm paraphrasing, of course. I know without any doubt, because I've come here this day, that you can heal. The question that I have is, will you heal me? And that's where you need to know the word. I, you know, I think about this. In my family, in my family's house, if I go visit, there are certain things that I know that if, for example, I have a certain need, I can ask. And in fact, if I didn't ask them, it would grieve them. If I came to their house and I was hungry, and I leave hungry and they find out, they would be upset with me because they would say, this is your right, it's your family, we expect you. And when my mother's right, I could go into her pantry and I could take things and she would never question it. And I never felt guilty for it. Instead, I would have felt concerned because I knew what she would have felt like had I not done something because she knew that I would not overstep my boundaries, but I would not understep them as well. Now, it's not the same. I look at, say, my in-laws, not trying to disrespect or in any way attack them. Don't hold that place. And I'm very careful. You know, we come in and, I, and there's certain things that, yes, I would ask, but certain things I would not assume and take. And we have this mindset when we come to the Father's house, either one where we know who we are, who He is first, who we are in Him, because of what Jesus did in our rights. And we know what He desires to give us and what offends Him if we walk away, not laying hold of it. But some of us walk where we don't know Him. 
And therefore, while we're trying to be respectful, there's a whole lot of stuff we don't touch, and we end up grieving Him. And the Lord wants us to so know His Word and be in submission to His Word personally. That's why it has to be not commonplace, but living in vibrant so that you know. And that you come along and you ask with an expectancy to receive. Now, if I continue here, I want to share this. Smith said, the leper must be told about Jesus. How much is missed because people are not constantly telling what Jesus will do in this our day. Probably someone had come to the leper and said, Jesus can heal. And so he was filled with expectation as he saw the Lord coming down the mountainside. Lepers were not allowed to come within reach of people. They were shut out as unclean. And so, in the ordinary way, it would have been very difficult for him to get near because of the crowd that surrounded Jesus. But as he came down from the mount, he met, he came to the leper. Oh, this terrible disease. There was no help for him, humanly speaking, but nothing is too hard for Jesus. So that in the natural, everything was absolutely stacked against and said that he had no hope. Even in seeing Jesus. Aren't you grateful that Jesus is always willing? Jesus will seek you out. He will seek you out if you hunger and thirst for him. If you're desperate enough, crying out. See, most of us, we do not truly seek his face. We talk a talk, but we don't have the act. We don't have the pursuit, and we don't have the testimonies because we don't have people that are truly wrecked, touched, and changed, and healed by the Lord. Now, continuing on, Smith said, You will never find Jesus missing an opportunity of doing good. You will find that He is always more willing to work than we are willing to give Him an opportunity to work. The trouble is, we do not come to Him. We do not Ask him for what he is more than willing to give. Therein so often is the problem. We want somebody else to go pay the price. Now, I understand. Listen, when you are in a difficult battle, it is a good and glorious thing to get the brethren praying for you. And there are times where we need care. We saw that, of course, with the man who is lowered through the roof. There are times where we need somebody to help us. But a lot of time, it's because we don't want to pay the price and we're concerned about losing. So that somebody else, we have such a low thought of ourselves and we are thinking that we have to somehow earn that healing when it is simply Him and we've lost sight of who He is. And I really pray that this day that you would get in the Word and seek his face afresh on those verses. You may have heard them a thousand times, but go get them yourself. Until you see the Lord speak to you and tell you it's not about who you are, it's about who he is. And then it's about who you are in him, not who you are in yourself. It's not about what you see about yourself, how you qualify, it's who he says you are. And then it comes down to your inheritance in him because of him. So that you come, totally disqualified in yourself, but qualified in Him. And I come and I realize, God, I am not deserving of this, but it's to honor You. It's because You paid the price. It is Your desire that I receive this, and it breaks me that this great mercy You would show to this person so undeserving. Smith said this, If you are definite with Him, you will never go away disappointed. The divine life will flow into you, and instantly you will be delivered. This Jesus is just the same today, and He says to you, I will be thou cleansed. He has an overflowing cup for thee, a fullness of life. He will meet you in absolute helplessness. All things are possible if you believe. God has a great plan. And I found personally that a lot of time, the process of pressing in to know Him. See, we want to pay, pray a five-minute prayer, or have somebody else pray it, and then receive. And we lose sight of the clinging 
and the process, because so often it's in the process that so much is done. As you abide in the Word, the Word has life in it, and that living Word in you begins to heal you. More people will be healed if they just abided more in the Word, had a living relationship, stayed, stayed more time in the secret place. But we just don't. And then secondly, the Word begins to correct us. And we find there's a lot of things that we have done that has opened the door to allow sickness in, and God wants to deal with the whole thing. And thirdly, God wants to bring the revelation that it's bigger than you. We're looking for this healing, and God says, I want a testimony. I want others to know the greatness of how good I am, what I did on the cross. And so for us, many of us, we view sickness as a crutch. We view sickness in so many ways that in reality, we don't really want healed because there's cost to. If I get healed, what are the consequences? But when you abide in the Word, and when you walk in a living relationship with the Lord, He corrects and builds in such a wonderful way that He's able to deliver you from so much wrong thinking that we've held on to, that we're a lot of times not even aware of. And He brings us into this glorious place. And often, along the way, we get our healings. I can't count how many healings God has done in my own life along the way. One of them I joke about, I'd had, oh my goodness, six or seven sinus surgeries. I found out recently that they never understood that I had an antibiotic-resistant infection. And so they're constantly trying to treat it with antibiotics, and it would get worse. Yeah, no wonder. And so they had done surgery so many times to fix it. And ultimately what they did, all the scar tissue, I lost all sense of smell. And I saw several surgeons to see if they could fix it, and they told me it is simply, and I saw one of the guys who was referred to as the father of sinus surgery down in Chicago, and they all told me, sorry, there's nothing to be done. There's no chance of you recovering. It's over. Well, one day I'm in the shower, just praying and seeking the Lord, and I take my body wash, and I go, and I'm like, what is that horrible smell? I smelled that stuff and I do not like it. And I went out and after I finished, come to the wife and said, what is that body wash? And she says, oh, and she said, I thought you liked it. And her perfume is gone. I said, no, we had candles with it. And I went, no, and so everywhere I went, it was like a nightmare. I said, Lord, I really don't like that smell. I had to purge it. I hated it. it wasn't, I didn't dislike it. I mean, I detested it. And the thought that I was wearing that for years. But God healed me that one day. Never lost it since. And you can't imagine the difference it makes. Even regarding eating food. Food has a greater depth, greater vibrancy. It's, it's awesome. Now, I want to continue here because we only look now at the centurion, okay? And Smith said regarding the centurion, this man was so earnest that he came seeking for Jesus. Notice this, there is one thing certain. There is no such thing as seeking without finding. He that seeketh findeth. Listen to the gracious words of Jesus. I will come and heal him. Most places that we go to, there are so many people that we cannot pray for. In some places there are two or three hundred who would love us to visit them, but we're not able to do so. But I'm glad the Lord is always willing to come and heal. He longs to meet the sick ones. He loves to heal them of their afflictions. You know, if you're in ministry, you'll understand what Smith is talking about. I get it. Your bandwidth gets stretched so thin with so many people requesting prayer. Like, Lord, I don't know how to meet it all. But Jesus never does that. You can always go to Jesus and get your healing. Now, in saying that, one of the things we're going to be putting up um, very soon is on our website you can ask for a prayer handkerchief where we're going to anoint and pray over it. You're going to have to give your full address and ask for it, and we're going to send it because simply we can't meet the need. But we're going to find ways to help and draw people to Jesus because Jesus is the healer. And He is always willing. He's never tired. He's never stretched too thin. He will always come. Aren't you grateful that He was willing to go to that 
centurion's home and heal that sick woman. Smith went on to say, the Lord is healing many people today by means of handkerchiefs. As you read that he healed people in the days of Paul, you can read of that, about that in Acts 19, verse 12. And again, you know, it's something we're going to be praying about. And Smith would actually take them and his whole family would pray over them and they sent them out. And we're going to do something similar because it's so critical in this hour that people have a point of contact that they can apply and, and use their faith as that point of contact with the Lord. Now, as we look at this man, the centurion, we understand authority. And again, it comes back to this area of submission. See, the man understood that authority is conveyed in words that produce actions and obedience to those words. And so he just says, just say the word. And if we understood that, see, if we walk under authority, and when we walk under authority, we're submitted to authority. Then words carry authority. And you will find that if you are somebody truly who walks in full submission to the word, into the Lord, and walks correctly in terms of the body of Christ, in correct submission, then you understand authority, and the word carries that authority in your life. You know, when we're out of an authority, then words are simply words. You know, we subject ourselves as we want, but the word lacks that power that it's supposed to have. But when you come in and Lord, you are my authority in my life, that you can speak into any area, you can correct. See, I like the comfort. I like the edification, but I need the correction. And it's sometimes I need the rebuke because I have to submit to his authority so that his word carries that authority in every area. And I desire that the Holy Spirit have the place of honor because when he does have the place of honor in my life, he will bring every aspect, spirit, soul, and body into subjection to the authority of Jesus. And I'm gonna tell you that you will find many sicknesses and diseases that you'll be delivered from. Another great one I could tell you about. You know, many years ago, I worked as a scientist in a lab, in a food lab, and a coworker mixed some chemicals, creating this very poisonous gas. It was right there at the sink. I am right beside them. And I jumped in, turned on the tap, pushed them out of the way, and I ended up burning my lungs. They're scarred. I developed what they refer to as reactive airway disease. And very quickly, things went downhill. Uh, they put me on those, it was like a methane-choline challenge, you know, for asthma, and I failed it immediately. Um, I was given all these restrictions. I always had to inhale it. It was terrible. I actually had to leave the lab. wasn't allowed to work in a lab anymore. Um, couldn't work in certain situations. Not allowed to go out in the cold weather. All these restrictions. But God delivered me of that. And I don't have an inhaler. I have not needed one in many years. I've gone through some of the coldest challenging situations that would have long ago kicked off a problem. You know, one being if it got zero or below. I've gone out well below zero without an issue. I've gone into smoke environments without an issue because God healed me of that. God delivered me of it. And that's another one that happens over time by just abiding in the secret place of His presence. And I believe this whole body that as I seek Him, as I give honor to that portion. Because see, listen, it's that area, if I make it just commonplace and I'm not receiving it, I'm not understanding and appreciating it, I'll miss it. What God wants and He puts on the table, if you refuse it, you're not gonna receive it. And so I wanna receive all that He has, the whole word of life. And so I wanna give attention to the whole word and keep it before my eyes all the time. Smith went on the same. If you are, oh, I think I read that one. Let's go back. Yeah, it's good. If you're deaf with him, you will never go away disappointed. The divine life will go into you and instantly you'll be delivered. And I just wanted to repeat that because I just feel this in my spirit that it's a definite. It's being definite with the Lord. Where I'm definitely coming, pursuing and seeking. When there's that definite, there is a holy um, determination in you that you're willing to pray all night. How far would you go if you're sick? I mean, have you ever gone to an emergency room and spent hours 
doctor's office and spend hours, yet we can't give the Lord 10 minutes. We can't give Him quality time and seek Him. And if you're desperate and definite, you go after and you give Him as much time as necessary because you need to hear what He has to say. Now, Smith said this, um, the Lord is healing men. Oh, I read that already. He is equal to every occasion. He's waiting for an opportunity to bless. He is ready for every opportunity to deliver souls. When we receive Jesus, it is of the true, uh, sorry, it is true of us. Greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. He is greater than all the powers of darkness. No man can defeat the devil in his own strength. But any man filled with the knowledge of Jesus, filled with his presence, filled with his power, is more than a match for the powers of darkness. God has called us to be more than conquerors through him who loved us. See, we are trying to overcome in our strength and in the strength of our opinions, in the strength of our knowledge of. But the time spent to know him. And that takes time. Listen, to have, if you are married or somebody you love, to know them takes time. It takes an investment. It takes vulnerability. It takes a pursuit. And it's the same thing with the Lord. And you have to daily pursue and go after. That relationship can never be stagnant. That's why we're to watch over the word daily. That's why we're informed that, the, you know, that our eyes are to be on the word, feeding on it. That pursuit in the secret place of His presence to know Him, to have this living relationship with Him, where we're daily becoming softer to Him, uh, more in tune with Him. We, we know His thoughts, His wills, his way, his way, because His thoughts are not our thoughts. His ways are not our ways. They're revealed in the Word, not in the head knowledge that we'll miss it, because the Pharisees and the scribes had a depth of knowledge about the Word and they missed it because they were in an agreement with, but not in a submission to. A submission comes by where it's revealed, where it is life, where it is absolute, where it means something, where it touches you and impacts you. If the Lord turned up and said to you, no, would you stop and not do it? If he says, go do this, would you pay whatever price to do that? Smith said this, The living word is able to destroy satanic forces. There is power in the name of Jesus. Now again, don't let that be commonplace. Don't let the word be commonplace. Get into the secret place. Oh, I feel the need to do a new, fresh video where we just press into some deeper waters in the secret place because you need that. You need to have an abiding relationship with Him in the secret place of His presence where you are being changed and people see that evidenced in your life. That's the greatest witness you can be. It's not just quoting scripture. It's not using the scripture as a weapon. But it's being a living epistle read by all that in such vulnerability, the Spirit of the living God is able to write with His own finger on the very tablets of your heart, the Word, imparting to you the very nature of the Lord of God Himself, impregnating you with the desires of the Father, and there's no resistance. There is an acceptance. There is a receiving. There is a yielding. There is an abiding with the Word, where the Word is everything to you. So many people are backsliding because they've lost sight of this living relationship. They've stopped abiding in the law of the Spirit, and you'll always find that. You, know, you see these people that backslide, and when we start to look at their lives, somewhere along the line, they stop walking in this living relationship, stop walking in submission, walked in an agreement, walked in a head knowledge, but not in a living, abiding relationship. Because if you are, see, if you really love your spouse, there's certain things you would not ever do. And too many people do things because they're not walking fully submitted, fully yielded. They're not fully comprehending the consequences because their opinions are too rich. We need to come back.
and where the Word is authority and the name of Jesus is everything in our lives. Let me share this. Swim said, but the man of God does not experiment. He knows, or he ought to know. Redemption in its fullness. He knows, or ought to know, the mightiness of the Lord Jesus Christ. He is not, or should not, be moved by an outward observation, but should get divine revelation of the mightiness of the name of Jesus and the power of His blood. If we exercise our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, He will come forth and get glory over all the power of darkness, because that is the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Look at it, what Jesus said, and what the Spirit of the living God will come and do. He comes to make known in your life what Jesus did on the cross. He comes to bring every aspect of your life into compliance so that Jesus is Lord over every area, spirit, soul, and body, and that you become a living witness and that you are a child that he's constantly bearing witness with, not just to build you up in the sense that, oh, I'm a child, I can do anything, but to build into you the awareness of what that means so that you think, walk, talk like a child, and you would never offend the Father because you know how good, how great He is. We've lost sight of this, and we need to return back again. Turn again to a true worship that comes with a true submission, a true yielding to, until every aspect of our lives brings in glory. We're not there yet. But as He is, so too are we in this world. That must be our goal, that the Spirit of God have your way. And maybe right now you are facing a sickness and disease, and I want to stand with you. I want to get in agreement with you based on the authority of the wonderful, mighty, powerful Word of God that declares that by His stripes you are healed and made whole. You can receive that right now. I encourage you to put your hands and receive it from the Lord Jesus in that mighty name. Some trust in chariots, some trust in horses. We will trust in the name. And Father, for the glory of your name, we come. We come to your word and we submit to your word. Mighty Holy Spirit, I thank you that Jesus is the Lord, our healer. And we receive that healing. We command every symptom to cease and bow its knee to the name of Jesus. We command every circumstance to bow to the name of Jesus. We declare over our lives healing and wholeness. Father, teach us. Holy Spirit, I thank you that you would come and guide us and lead us and show us how to walk and receive that healing that the world might see and know that Jesus is the Lord our God, the Lord healer. I'm grateful that Jesus, you came to destroy the works of the enemy and sickness and disease are part of that. Come and work it in my life. I thank you as we abide in the secret place of your presence that you would do such a work in us that Father, people that are in pain right now will be relieved because you came to bear our pains. So let them be delivered, Father. You've come, Father, to set us wholly free of all afflictions. So Father, in the name that's above all names, I thank you for that healing. Father God, any sin or anything that we've done that has opened the door, allows sickness into our lives, we repent right now. We plead the blood of Jesus. Holy Spirit, convict us. Holy Spirit, show us. And let us get it on the altar. And let us get washed. Let us get cleansed. And Father God, let us never go back. Oh, Holy Spirit, show us. So put in us and mark us and scar us that we would never go back, but we would press on. Father, because there's always so much more at stake. There are other lives that need to be touched. There are other people that are broken and sick that need to know. There are families that have been devastated by cancer and other sicknesses. Father God, we are a light and the world needs to see Jesus. We're so grateful. I'm so grateful that first and foremost for the salvation in you, Jesus. We honor you, Jesus. We worship you. And I so encourage everybody listening, begin to worship. Would you begin to acknowledge how great He is? Would you begin to worship until He is bigger, greater? Some of you have been so drowning in your symptoms, in your circumstances, that the voice of those have so outweighed the voice that Jesus is Lord. We need to worship Him. We need to enthrone Him because the enemy is still stopped by the praises. He abides in His praises. 
Now he's in your presence. Oh, we just got to lay hold of him. We just got to touch the hem of his garment. So let's worship him. Let's glory in the Lord our God. Let's give him the worship. Let's give him the honor because he deserves it all. We want to lift him up. We want to worship him. Father, we repent for too long of sickness, disease, and that we've tolerated aloud in our lives. We've given the enemy too much comfort. Father, it's time that we stood up. It's time that we began to claim our inheritance in you. And Father, press forward to receive all that you have for us. Jesus, we worship you. Jesus, we glory in you. We bless the name of the Lord our God. Father, we honor you. You are our all in all. We honor you as the El Shaddai, the more than sufficient. And let the anointing of your presence so fall. Father, there's no distance in the spirit. Jesus, you were able to heal the centurion's servant far off. Now he was healed, Father, in that very hour. We don't know when that was, instantly or when, ever. Some people, Father, let them be healed instantly. Others, according to your perfect plan, let them receive and recover. You said you'll lay hands on the sick and they will recover. And we claim recovery, Father. We reclaim, Father God, a full restoration above and beyond. Strengthen their bodies. Father God, joints renewed. Oh, Father, he uh, headaches to go. Father God, that which is broken may right in the name that is above all names. Because of you, Jesus, we just lift you up. Jesus, we honor you. We lift you up, Jesus. So Ho Holy Spirit, teach us. Oh, show us. Lead us in. Lead us in. Ho so Bring us out of all that we need to be brought out of. That we have sown to our flesh and opened doors to the enemy. And lead us in. I thank you. Father, that your word is always rich. I thank your word is always more than sufficient, more than enough. Pour out, pour in. For the Father God, the press down, shaken together, overflowing measure in that name that's above all names, the name of Jesus. So Ramada. Let us soak in your word. Let us meditate in your word day and night. Let us keep it ever before our eyes. Father, some people are in a battle. And I'm so grateful, Holy Spirit, that you are with us. Help us to stand on your word. Father, to hold fast to your word that in our lives, no matter what happens, we trust in your word. Father, whether we see a healing or not, and does not take away from the fact that you are the Lord our healer. And it's time that we start to see more people rising up and receiving their healing. No gimmicks, no games, but Jesus, that you and all that receive all the honor. It's all about Jesus. And we want to see people giving glory to Jesus. Father, this generation is so hardened so into the world. They need to see that which is real. They need to see that which is true and let them see it in us. Father, do a mighty work. Transform us, change us, mighty Holy Spirit. Bring us back to our knees. Bring us back into the place of holy repentance until we are utterly wrecked and changed by your hands. Father, I give you worship. Jesus, we honor you in this place. We declare that Jesus, you are Lord. And we receive your all of it in our lives. We bless you, Jesus. We glory in you. And I thank you, Father. And that name, Father, that is above all names. And it is through that name. We come as we are in the name of Jesus. And through the finished work of the cross. Not based on how we feel. Not based on, Father, what we've done. Based on you, Jesus. We look to you. We are to look Father God, to Jesus, and we do right now, would you get your eyes on Jesus? Would you get your eyes off of your problems, off of your symptoms? And would you get your eyes on Jesus? Just give him some worship. You know, in the scientific world, they'll talk about this law that something that is observed doesn't change. So stop watching your circumstances. Get your eyes on Jesus. Get your eyes on Jesus. You watch, <laughs> no pun intended, how he does a work. How he changes you and transforms you. Oh, just you need to get your worship going. You need to get your worship of the Lord your God. You got to start honoring him. That sickness and disease has so distracted you. It has stolen your attention that belongs to the Lord our God. Let's give him the worship. Let's give him the praise. Let's give him all the glory. Amen. Well, I just pray that in that name that is above all names, that's greater. See, at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Everything that is named bows to the name of Jesus. So whatever you're facing, it has a name. Therefore, it bows to the name of Jesus. If you bow first. Hallelujah. Well, I pray this message has blessed you and encouraged you. If it has, would you in the mighty and glorious name of Jesus, please like, share, subscribe, and give your comments. Because as you do, you really help us in this hour. 
let's stand up. Let's rise up and let's give him glory. Let's live boldly for Jesus. And would you stand with me? Would you consider becoming a prayer partner with me? Uh, if you Lord puts in your heart a financial partner, amen. To become a partner, simply go to robertpairs.org and go to the partner page. But I'm looking for partners to dare believe for more. For more backsliders brought back. To produce more, to reach more, to see more believers living boldly for Jesus. For more. I want more of Him in my life. I want to have a, a word that's deeper, richer, fresher, more. To give more. And we stand together that we might speak the word openly and accurately. I want more people praying with me, standing with me. And thank you, Jesus, that, you know, as partners, they are, we ask the partners, pray for each other. And what a thought that as you are praying and standing uh, just in this partnership program, that at any point where you need, God can pull on any partner worldwide to pray for you just when you need it. You don't even have to ask. Spirit of God can just pull on that. You've made a covenant with the Lord your God, and He is faithful. And so I just bless you and thank you. And I want to remind you as always, we stand and declare that that name, that's above all names, the name that is above all names, the name of Jesus. You've got to honor the name of Jesus, that this is the day of salvation. Think about that. This is the day of your healing. This is the day of your breaking through. Because in His presence, His fullness, joy in His presence, there is liberty. Receive that right now. Receive it. Would you receive it? Receive your healing. Breathe it in. Receive it by the mighty hand of the Spirit. And remember that this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it because through and for Him, in that name that is above all names, the name of Jesus we pray. And everyone said, Amen and Amen. Thank you.